You know, polls come and go, but the latest Fox News survey has an eye-popping figure that has really made a lot of headlines. 56% of those questions say they believe President Trump is tearing the country apart. 33% disagree. Now, there's a great partisan split uh, in that number. Almost all Democrats say yes to that question, tearing the country apart. Most Republicans disagree. Uh, somewhat of a majority of independents agree. But there's a much larger point here, whether you agree or not, that the policies that the president is pursuing or the way in which he speaks to the country is, in fact, contributing to the divisions. This is hardly the first time that that has happened. Just, just go to the Wayback Machine and let's look at recent presidents. Barack Obama, he campaigned specifically on the notion that he would change the tone in Washington. And a lot of people, first African-American president, uh, thought he would usher in sort of a new division, a new era of racial hearing. N none of that happened. George W. Bush, he, I heard him say this on the campaign trail over and over and over again. I am a uniter, not a divider. Well, he may have tried to be, but he ended up being viewed as a divider. Part of that was the Iraq War, Katrina, you name it. Uh, certainly Bush fell short. Bill Clinton used to talk about the third way in politics, uh, that he was campaigning against the brain-dead politics of both parties. Clinton wound up being impeached largely on a party-line vote by Republicans in the House. So that's four straight presidents who have found themselves sort of in the eye of political polarization. So maybe this has, uh, can't be laid only at the feet of Donald Trump. And so what might be contributing to that? Well, we have the media, which more and more are moving in, in a, a partisan direction, and more and more people just tune in or read or listen to the outlets that they think voice their opinions. We have Congress and both political parties. There are very few moderates left in Congress because of gerrymandering and because um, the Republicans have moved right and the Democrats have moved left, and that's where uh, they get the biggest payoff. You also have the rise of independent groups that raise a lot of money by pushing uh, positions that are more conservative, more liberal, demonizing the other side. And then you folks, you know, all of America participates this in, that, in this now, particularly on social media, where day after day after day, I see people yelling at each other over Trump, over Obama, over issues, uh, and unfriending each other on Facebook. Uh, the whole tone has changed. So there's some collective responsibility here. You have political trends married to um, the fact that anybody now has a megaphone. Uh, so none of this is to let Trump off the hook. I mean, if you look at the last few weeks, he's kind of been playing to his political base, whether it's the pardon of Joe Arpaio or uh, uh, the transgender ban for the military that he is pushing or several other issues. Uh, but at the same time, that's the way politics has been practiced in this country for the last 20 years. So the notion that it is solely because of Donald Trump, or Donald Trump is the most divisive president ever, you might want to reconsider that just by looking at recent history.